Welcome back. We are ready for our next guest. She was born in Greece, but raised in Denmark. So she's a real daughter of Europe. Please welcome from Greece, Amanda Georgiani Tenfjord. Hello. So I said that you raised in Denmark instead of Norway, so I'm sorry for this. That's right. <laughs> Hello, how are you? Hello. I'm good. Do you okay. Have coffee? Fine, thank yeah, you. Yeah, sure. Okay, let's start with a question from here if you want, or yes. <laughs> You have a question for everybody. I love that. Of course, of course. That's what, we, <laughs> that's what we're here for. Good afternoon, Team Greece. It's JP from Radio International. Amanda, like the moderator said, you, you are born in Greece. Now you're living in Norway. How did this come up? What, uh, why? Why? Uh, well, my dad is Greek. My mother is uh, Norwegian. And they lived in Greece until I was three years old. And then they decided to move to Norway. Uh, and since then, we've always been visiting Greece every year because I have a grandma there and family and yeah. Uh, but why we left, is that the question or no? <laughs> but yeah, so um, yeah. You first and then you. Hello, I'm Simon from Poland, Radio Newsletter. Two questions, actually, if I may. Uh, the first thing, I, I know that you already to were talking about it during the first meeting, uh, Greet and Meet, about hearing your song, but particularly what you hear in your ear uh, when you start the song, because I'm sure that it's quite difficult to uh, keep the song in the, uh, the, the rhythm. And the second, oh yeah. Okay, so what I hear in my yes, ear. Yeah, um, yeah it's... Uh, I have like a metronome yeah. to keep the tempo, and then in the beginning it's like one, two, three, four, and then there's chords. So I keep the right note because without it, it would be very difficult to keep the right note. Uh, but yeah, so it's just like metronome and basic chords to just, and then after a while, the songs, like the original song that comes out, is the same that I have in my ears. Thank you. And, uh by the way, I mean, the impression from today is amazing. Thank you. Really, I mean, uh, it's, it's great. Thank you. Uh, you are Greek, but also Norwegian. Some of your predecessors were also um, not Greek uh, the 100%, like from Canada, like from uh, the Netherlands, like from uh, Cyprus is Greek. So, okay. Uh, tell me, uh, uh, what do you think about this strategy of the broadcaster to, to take back home uh, Greek girls from the world? Uh, <laughs> Sorry, but is that is that a question for Amanda or for me? As well, for both I of like you. Head of delegation, actually. So, wh what, what exactly is your question? Just a little bit closer to the mic so we yeah. can hear you. Could, you. could you repeat your question, please? Yeah, it is about the policy taking Greek girls from the world as the representative. Is it a hidden uh, uh, s message or something? Actually, um, we think that Amanda, along with the other artists that have represented Greece, were ex exceptionally talented artists. So, this is what uh, is of interest. To, um, to allow this talent to shine. Okay, thank you. Okay, it's your turn. After him. Please. Thank you. Uh, hello, and congratulations, Amanda, for your rehearsal. You were amazing. We are thank proud of you. My name is Ioannis Sambazivis from Greece, and my question is, a few weeks ago, when you met uh, Kalomira, uh, she told you that uh, you must have a, a lucky charm when you come to Italy. But then you told her that you don't have. Coming to Italy, do you have anyone? I will admit that I'm not very superstitious. So I don't have like, usually I don't bring lucky charms, but I have um, my Greek flag that I carry around. Other than that, I don't have anything. I'm not gonna <laughs> <laughs> lie it's to okay. you. It's okay, yeah. perfect. Thank you. Your turn. Uh, 
Hello, Stefan Gorkum from ESC Daily. I have a question actually for Falkas. <laughs> okay. You have a, a very impressive Eurovision resume of uh, staging Eurovision entries that I think almost all of them ended up in the top 10. But many of them were different kind of songs, were either upbeat or big in some way. Whereas this song is very small, especially at the beginning. Can you tell us how, uh, it, how different it was coming up with a good staging concept for this song as opposed to all the previous ones? Sorry, because my English is not very good. I want to translate, please, to help me. Uh, ναι, πολλές φορές ε, έχω κάνει ανάλογα με τα τραγούδια πολύ όμορφα πράγματα, πιστεύω, στη Eurovision γιατί, και ευχαριστούμε γι' αυτό γιατί η Eurovision μας δίνει τη δυνατότητα να κάνουμε τα όνειρά μας πραγματικότητα. Φωκά says that he has got the honor to stage many remarkable acts and uh, he is very grateful for that um, and he feels that uh, he has had an opportunity to uh, make his dreams come true. Uh, within the Eurovision Song Contest. For this song, uh, για αυτό το τραγούδι, uh, το αγάπησα πάρα πολύ γιατί έχει υπέροχες παύσεις που είναι πολύ δυνατές. Um, he uh, uh, really loves this song because uh, he feels that the points of silence speak louder sometimes than the, the human voice. Και είχα στο μυαλό μου τρεις πυλώνες που θα ήθελα να δείξω πάνω στη σκηνή έχοντας μια φανταστική τραγουδίστρια σαν την Αμάντα. And um, he has uh, worked around three axes together with uh, this amazing singer, Amanda. Uh, and uh, using three, those three axes or principles, he uh, um, built the stage around, the, around those. Η, ο ένας πυλώνας είναι η απώλεια, γι' αυτό είναι μόνη της. One of the, um, of the, the uh, principles is uh, the absence. This is why she's alone on stage. Το δεύτερο είναι η απουσία, γι' αυτό και στο βίντεο βλέπουμε την ανάμνησή της με τον παρτενέρ της. Ε, το πρώτο τι ήτανε, ανάμνηση. Τώρα είναι η απουσία. Τι ήτανε πριν, ανάμνηση. Η απώλεια. Απώλεια, οκ. Okay. Uh, it's absence and loss and this is we see her uh, in the, the background together with her partner. On the lead, on the lead uh, mm -hmm. wall. Yes. Και το τρίτο είναι η, η, η φθορά, γι' αυτό και οι καρέκλες είναι λιωμένες. So the third uh, point that uh, Focus wants, wants to make with the staging is the wear of uh, the relationship. And this is why we see the, those chairs that are melt on the floor. It's just rain. Yes. <laughs> okay? <laughs> Don't be scared. <laughs> It's good luck. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Okay, another question? Yes, please, that side. Wow. Mm. Hello, I'm uh, Angelos from Greece, Eurofans Radio. Hello. Your uh, performance is so captivating, really good. We really enjoy it. Thank you. I will, al so I will ask you uh, since your song is talking about a breakup, a painful breakup, What is the key for somebody that has broken up to get out of the difficult situation? Like, what's your piece of advice for wow. that? And uh, just a short second question. Since you're living a lot of time out of Greece, what part of Greece or what thing is that you miss most of the country when you go back and it's the first thing you do? Okay. Do you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm having a little bit trouble to hear you, but the first question was, to come over a breakup, what do you do? Exactly, yeah. I'm not exactly a uh, professional <laughs> in this, but uh, I think for me at least, it is to do things that make you happy, stay around people that make you happy. <laughs> uh, and yeah, just spend a lot of time with your friends. In the water through the stage. <laughs> and, uh, and just be nice to yourself, I think, and take your time because it will, sometimes it takes a lot of time. And the second question I didn't hear, but what, when I go back to Norway, yeah, what do I miss? Which part of Greece do you miss most when you are outside? Oh. And what do you, it's the first thing you like to do when you go back to hometown, you know? 
uh, a lot of things. I love Greece, and uh, I wish I, it's been so nice to be there. Like I've been a lot of time in Greece this half year, like more than usual, and it's been amazing. And when I go back, uh, I miss, of course, the food, like souvlaki and gyros, <laughs> which I love, and uh, my family, my grandma, as I said, and. Uh, I guess just the atmosphere and the people, because they're very warm and open. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. I have a question from Charlotte from Eurovisionary.com. If we look at your heritage, what's your favorite thing about Greece, and what's your favorite thing about Norway? One thing for each. OK. OK. Um, I hate to pick one thing. I don't, I'm not really good at choosing. Favorite thing. Uh, okay, my favorite thing in Greece is the people, as I said. Well, not that I don't like Norwegian people, but uh, my favorite thing in Norway is the peace. It's very quiet. Yeah. Okay. Next question. Yes, of course. Okay. Hello, Amanda. It's JP again from Radio International. Um, I'm reading about you that uh, you, uh, you have got music that traveled globally um, with Spinning Out uh, and also the BBC production and NRK production, Nudes. How did that collaboration come up? Sorry, I didn't hear anything. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I will try Sorry, again. Sorry, we can't hear you, really. We can't hear you. You, can, you cannot hear yeah. me? Okay, no. I'll try again. Can you repeat the... Yeah. yeah, can you it's repeat the question? Fault. Collaboration with? The collaboration between, um, of the television programs that you've been doing, which showed your music and spread that one around uh, the world on Spotify and so on. I'm talking about Netflix, Nudes, that series. How did that collaboration come up? I heard something about Netflix? Yes, yes, yes. Of the, your music, your music was used in those movies. Yes, that's Can true. My song, that? Troubled Water, which I made uh, some years ago, was used in an American Netflix series called Spinning Out. <laughs> Sorry, I have to like, kind of guess what you asked. But, um, and uh, how did it happen? Was that? Okay. Uh, it, uh, I think it was quite random. Like The woman that was responsible for finding the music for the show heard my music on Spotify. And uh, she just kind of approached to our team and asked if she could use the song. And I think it was amazing. And uh, the show was great. And uh, yeah, I think it's amazing when like music gets used in uh, other types of art, like uh, movies and series. Yeah. OK, we have uh, Nikolaus from Germany. Congratulations and thank you for this epic staging. What is the first thing you do if you win the Eurovision Song Contest? What the is first, the first? The first thing you will do if you win Eurovision Song Contest. Oh, I haven't thought of that. I, I don't know, cry, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And call someone, maybe? Call, yeah. Well, my parents are going to be here. Okay. And my boyfriend is going to be here, so... Uh, but I can call my Greek grandma. I think that would be a nice thing, yeah. Okay. Uh, Alberto from Latin America. What do you feel when you sing your song? What do you feel? When I... When you sing your song? On stage. Uh... How do I, what do I feel? I feel, uh, well, there's a lot of things going on in my head, but uh, usually I, what I try to think about is like the feeling I had when I wrote the song. Uh, because that's when I think I do the best performance, when I kind of try to connect with what I actually sing. Because it's a very like, it's a personal lyrics and um, yeah. So just try to feel, feel. <laughs> Okay, uh, from Eurofart Australia, tell us about your grandmother in Greece and what does she think about your participation in Eurovision? My mom? Your grandma. My grandma. Uh, yes, she is uh, 101 years old. Yeah. Uh, she is amazing and she's the smartest woman I know. And uh, she lives in Janina. And uh, what does she, I think she's proud. 
uh, but she's always like, don't change, be yourself, don't listen to any of the things going on, just be, be who you are. And uh, I, think <laughs> I think that's a smart thing to remember, yeah. She's lovely. Okay, we have time for a last question. Yes, please. Hello, Amanda. Hello. Congratulations to all of you. It was just louder because the storm is <laughs> better now. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So uh, you wrote a song about uh, a divorce uh, with your boyfriend, your ex-boyfriend. Do you think that Focas uh, gave the meaning of your song on the stage? And second part of the question: Is there a, a, any specific uh, part in during the three minutes that it's really difficult for you? Hmm. Okay, so the first question, I think definitely yes, because uh, the first thing we did was to like talk for hours about feeling and what the song is about and what I wanted to say. So, and it was very important for me to to have a staging that kind of matches the message, not the message of the song, but the feeling of the song. And I think Focus did a great job there. Uh, and also he has always been uh, like seeing me and what who I am and how do I move so a lot of the movements are like my natural movements and um, yeah so I think he did a great job there and the second my memory is very yes uh, if it is a difficult part of the song uh, not of the song uh, during the three minutes of yeah. the presentation yeah if, if there's a specific part that is really difficult for difficult. you um, I think uh, it depends, like uh, for the voice, it's the high note, I guess, that is like the make or break moment. But uh, also like, it's a quite a long dress. So I try not to stumble when I walk backwards because it's like, I'm not used to wearing dresses that much, but yeah. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. So thank you very much for being with us. Enjoy thank you. Eurovision. Thank you. Protocol is waiting for you over there, the photo call if you want, and we'll be back for our last press conference with Portugal. Stay there.